All right, today we are going to take a look at how we can find the sum of angles inside any polygon based on what we discovered in our last class when looking at triangles. A polygon, remember, is basically any shape that has corners and sides, so it can be um, anything from a triangle up until like whatever you can kind of imagine. They start to look, the more sides they have, the more they look like circles, although a circle isn't technically a polygon because it's curved. Um, as we look at these, we can use, like I said, that knowledge of triangles to start to discover and make a rule for how we find the number of degrees inside any shape. We're going to start with our most basic one. So I'm going to start us with um, our rectangle. So when we look at our rectangle, our, rec our rectangle is standing in for a quadrilateral. Um, what we want to do is we're going to start looking at how many triangles can we fit in this shape. Um, and the thing about the triangles that we have to be careful of is that because we're using the triangles to determine the number of degrees, the angles of the triangle have to be shared with the angles of our polygon, meaning we can't make triangles doing something like this, because if we did um, lines like this, we end up with these angles of triangles that are on the inside and have nothing to do with these angles in our quadrilateral. So we do not want to do this. Instead, what we're going to do, and the easiest way to do this is kind of thinking about picking one vertex and then drawing lines um, to our other vertices, making triangles when we can. I might pick this vertex. For example, if I draw a line here to that vertex, one to this vertex, and one here, we can see that two of the lines really didn't make any triangles because they're adjacent sides to our vertex. Our vertex. Um, or they make up that, that angle, and here we end up with only two triangles. So when we have a four-sided shape, we're going to end up with two triangles. And if you think about that, basically this angle plus this angle plus this angle have to equal 180 degrees, and then this angle, this angle, and this angle have to equal 180 degrees. We have two triangles times 180 degrees. So every quadrilateral ends up being a total of 360 degrees. Let's look at our five-sided shape or our pentagon. Um, now this is a regular pentagon with all the sides are the same um, length, but we can do that same thing. I'm gonna pick a vertex and then we're gonna go ahead and just draw our other angles. So this time we have five sides. We only end up with three triangles. So three triangles times 180 degrees makes our total for a pentagon 540 degrees. All right, at this point, why don't you pause the video and try the next one on your own and see what you come up with for the total number of degrees. And then when you're ready, go ahead and come back and check your work. All right, I am ready to try this out. So here is my vertex. I'm gonna go to each other vertice. My hexagon, which has six sides, ends up with four triangles, so it becomes four times 180 degrees for a total of 720 degrees. Okay, if you get the hang of it, why don't you pause the video and kind of um, do the rest of them, and then I will, when you come back, I will kind of go through really quickly how many sides, how many triangles, and how many degrees. All right, hopefully you went ahead and paused the video and tried the next ones out. So if we keep going here, our next one has seven sides. So as we start to draw out our triangles, you should be noticing a pattern here in math is that investigation of patterns. Five times 180 
we end up with 900 degrees. For our octagon, okay, we have eight sides or six triangles, which ends up six times 180 or 1080 degrees. All right, and hopefully you noticed as you were going through, we went from our octagon and we actually jumped to a decagon. So if you look here and we count, we actually have one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Our next figure is a ten-sided figure. But hopefully we're still noticing that pattern, right? Um, if we make all of our triangles, there would be eight triangles. This becomes eight times 180, which is 1,440 degrees. And then our last one also makes a jump as well. Um, so if we look here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 sides. Okay. Our 12-sided figure, we're gonna go ahead and make our triangles. And as you can kind of see, like I talked about earlier, the more sides that we get, the more it looks like a circle. With our 12-sided figure, we end up with 10 triangles. So 10 times 180 will give us 1,800 degrees. Now, as we've seen that um, pattern as we're going through of making triangles. Hopefully you start to make a generalization of what it looks like when we have an n-sided figure. So n-sided means any sided figure. Um, so it could be a 20-sided figure, a 30-sided figure, whatever it is, we're seeing a pattern. So if it's n-sided, it's going to have n sides on it. And if we look back at all of these in this column where we were talking about how many triangles there are, hopefully you started to notice that there is always kind of two less triangles than there are sides. Making this that we can make a generalization that the number of triangles is always the number of sides minus two. And then since it's looking at um, the number of triangles times 180, our formula that we can use is that we're gonna do the number of sides minus two times 180 degrees and this is our formula for finding the number of degrees in any type of polygon and then once we know that we can kind of use it like we did when we were doing complementary supplementary angles or finding the missing angle in a triangle we just find that total number of degrees and then we can take out what we know so if we know for example a pentagon if we know five of four of the angles, we could take, um, so in our pentagon, there was 540. We could take 540 and subtract out what we already know, and what's left would be our missing angle.